All right, one more, excuse me, one more time, guys. Get out your books, please. Let's pick up where we left off on selling the t-shirts uh, from yesterday, okay? So today we're going to continue working on those word problems, <clears throat> excuse me, on those word problems. And then um, after that, uh, this week, um, I keep telling you, we're going to then quiz up on uh, a Monday here over the stuff that we've been looking at, okay? So let's just, like I said, get back into your books. Uh, let me bring up the page we left off on. Give me a second to bring that up. Check me on that, but I think we're on page M2 dash. Where's the page? 34. M2 dash 34, everybody. I think that's where we left off at. Okay? So give me everybody a chance to get there. M2 dash 34, please. All right, keep those phones away. Focus up here today. Okay, so let's do this. M2 34. Yesterday we had talked about selling t shirts. Okay, now I'm selling those t shirts. We were just walking in to the festival selling t shirts. I talked about like March 100 comes in and does that here at the high school during the first week of December. And with that, so we have to have to do it We didn't have to worry about any of that we worked on yesterday. But today, we do have to start worrying about some other things out there. Now, somebody in our six hour said this is kind of like, you know, uh, the business firm is with like buying supplies. Yes, it's on the trip down for a So as we look at that next page, then do dash. Okay. We got a new graph going on. As you can see in your guys' books, that black, um, sorry, I think I actually, my bad. We got to go back one more page. We're not on 34 yet. My bad. Sorry about that. Not there yet. Uh, go back to this page. 2.3, it says at the top. Actually, what page is this? M2 30. Sorry. 30 is where we want to be. Let's try this again. M2 30. So, as I was saying there, this is where I caught myself. The graph that is in black right there, that's what we dealt with yesterday. We had determined that we were selling these shirts at $15 a pop by calculating that slope, rise over run. Now, they give you a new graph today that is in that green one. So what happened to that green graph? Is it exactly the same? Close, but what happened to it? Kind of shifted down, right? So it kind of shifted down, and why is that happening? So as we read through here on this festival, Marilyn's mom, again, continues to suggest she sells them at $15 a pop. So that's where that slope is staying the same. That didn't change up on us. But now, to try to draw in some more people, they suggest about giving away free t-shirts and a raffle. So we've all been there about kind of giving away freebie stuff, or maybe receiving the freebie stuff. And by doing that now, when you give away those freebies in a raffle, that changes our graph around. You guys said it shifted down, right? Shifted down a bit. So no longer are we starting off here at zero dollars. Before the festival starts yesterday, we were at zero dollars, and then we started selling t-shirts, we started making money. But now we are saying we are starting off already in the hole. We're starting in the hole based off of three t-shirts. Okay, so our graph, this green one today, starts as we can see down there. I've sold zero t-shirts, but now I'm down below in negative territory. At what point is that located at? Zero comma. Do I have an idea what that number is? What's that? Negative not fifty, you said? Almost fifty. Where's that negative forty-five is coming at? It's because we're giving away three t-shirts. And each t-shirt is how much? $15, right? Well, what's three times 15? Three times 15 is that $45. That's where we're getting that negative 45 from. So that is our new graph today. So if you do give away freebies, 
got to pay for it somehow, right? So you're starting off the whole already paying ten dollars. So what does that mean? How many t-shirts do I need to get out of that hole? And then once I get out of that hole, after that, the money I start making, I get to keep it. That's my earnings. But right now, we're in the hole forty-five dollars. To get out of that hole, I need to sell so many t-shirts off of there. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, give me a second. There we go. Okay. On this page then, okay, as we are talking then, <coughs> letter A, we just said that. How do the graphs show they are selling at the same price per t-shirt? What do we say about the slopes? The slopes are, yeah, the slopes determine that. The slopes are the same. One thing is it tells, the in the problem, it says, hey, but mom says keep selling at 15 bucks a pop. So, 15 bucks a pop, that's where that um, staying the same from yesterday, that's that slope. Up 15 over 1, up 15 over 1, and so on. Now, what else do we got? Deterpret, interpret the, sorry, determine, interpret the meaning of y equals g of 0 in terms of this graph and this scenario. Okay, <clears throat> so what does that mean? When we look at these two graphs right here, we have two equations. We've got E of T and we've got G of T. Yesterday is what we call our E of T graph. Today we're going to call it G of T just to get it a different name because it is a different graph. So usually we just use obviously different letters for that. E, G, F, whatever the case is. Okay. Now what does that mean again when we are starting off at zero? How much money did we lose? Sold zero because that zero there. Zero shirts. And do we make any money here? No. How much are we in the hole? How much we said we were in the hole? Forty-five dollars, right? So sold zero shirts. And um, I don't want to phrase it because we didn't make negative forty-five dollars. So zero shirts and starting at. Negative $45. Okay? So, <clears throat> in order to just uh, do this particular problem, we're starting off by giving some freebies away. We start in the, in the hole. Okay? So, you might have heard the phrase, especially with Black Friday coming up, being in the red. That's what we're at right now. We're in the red. When you start in negative, you're in the red. Once you get to positive, you're in the black. Friday, because all the stores are in the red about this time of the year. Black Friday is the big shopping time of the year, and then they go from red into the black territory. Hence why they call it Black Friday. Okay, so determine and interpret the meaning of g of t equals zero in terms of this graph. Okay, now what that means here is this time we're looking at this dude right here, that point right there. What is that location right there? The one that we just highlighted there. What is its location? One, two, three, comma, zero, right? Three, comma, zero. What does that mean for us? If we're giving away free t free, free t-shirts, how many t-shirts do we need to sell in order to recoup that? Three t-shirts, right? If you give away three in order to recoup that money back, how many t-shirts do you need to sell? Three. So what that means then is uh, we need to sell three shirts in order to make back uh, the forty-five dollars. And just to address um, in math again, they call that breaking even. So they're going to see that in there. So. The word break even there, I think we might even mention yesterday, where break even then is going from that negative up to that part where you've recouped your money back. So as, as again, Kino pointed out, and as you're going to see on Matthew here, we call that breaking even. We've all used that phrase maybe before or heard about it, but that's exactly what that means, break even. You get back to zero. 
so you make, get back to the surface there, and then after that, we start getting those arrows. Okay. Now, before we go ahead and flip it to the next page here, because we got the graph, I don't think the graph follows us on the next page, does it? It does not. So let's keep talking about this graph. Let's write the equation for our new one today. Okay. While we're on this page, let's write the equation for this. So we've all done our lines before. Yesterday, we said that the equation for yesterday's was 15t. Cool. Now today, we are giving away freebie stuff, so that obviously changed the graph. So when I keep saying, write me that equation, this is what we want to see from you. Ax plus b. Ax plus b. I want to know what the slope is. I want to know what the y-intercept was. Yesterday, again, you told me we calculated a slope of 15 over 1. We said the same slope is happening today. We're still selling these at $15 a pop. But is my graph, my green graph, is it starting at the uh, origin again? No, where is it starting off at? Way down here at negative 45. Again, we call that specific point the y-intercept. It's crossing the y-axis at that location. So we put a minus 45 right there. So we, we've done it before, just now an application like this. Now, we've been using the variable t, haven't we? t for t-shirts. So off to the side now, let's put that out there. Instead of saying 15x minus 45, we're going to say what? 15t minus $45. So that tells me again, we're starting off in the hole, $45. And how do we get out of that hole to that break even point? Start selling t shirts at $15 a pop. Once you sell three t shirts, boom, we've got out of the hole. We're at zero. Once you start selling four t shirts, five t shirts, six, seven, like 10, 100, that's all your earnings we were talking about yesterday. Okay? So making the equations is definitely part of the battle, as we can see in four times. I'll give you a second. Keep that equation in your head because we're going to use that, I think, on the next couple pages. Okay? Give you a second. Let's see that before we're still writing there. And now, as we look at the next few pages together, some of the questions are fine, some of them just ain't worth our time. So, as we do with anything, we'll skip over some questions and focus on really what's the heart of these problems. Okay? So, let's go ahead and let's flip it and let's look at that. All right. <clears throat> Scroll this down, minimize down a bit for us to talk. Okay, so here's the thing. We can talk about things at different viewpoints, okay? And on this here, this next page, we got Michelle here and Myra talking about basically the same thing, just from a different viewpoint, okay? What we've done here is use your distributive property. Let's think back to the last couple of weeks. When I look at this, 15t with parentheses, minus 3, and I compare that to 15t minus 45, they are talking about the same thing just in a different way. What did we write on the other side? We wrote what? Minus 45, right? Another way to look at about, think about this is you're selling t-shirts, right? How many freebies did you give away? Three. So you got to take away those three t-shirts, and then we're going to multiply that by that $15 a pop. Okay? That's another way to write it. I'm not going to stress you out about that part. It's probably going to pop up a little bit in Matthew. But down the road in algebra, we'll do some more work with these different types of forms. But we're saying the same thing. If you've got a nickname, it means the same person, right? So here, how can we make this become that? Use our property. Yep. When I distribute that 15, well, what's 15 times t? And what's 15 times negative 3? Is that the same thing as what was on the other side? Sure is. Okay. So we're talking about the same thing, just written in a different way. Now, the way that I always look at it is what we just talked about, 15 minus 45. Is that the only way? No. So there's another way to look at that. Now, let's talk about what we've been doing. How many t-shirts is Maryland going to need to sell in order to make $100? So let's look at this from our graph. Let's flip it back to the previous page. Now, which graph are we focusing on, the black one or the green one? Focus on the green one today, because that's our new one. 
Where's $100 at? $100, that's our y-axis, that's our earnings. Look at that green one. Where is that location? Right there. Yeah, what's it between? Yeah, it's between, if I go straight down, I look, it's between 9 and 10. So if I want to make that 100 bucks, we talked about this yesterday, how many t-shirts am I going to need to sell? 9 or 10? 10. Correct. Because as we keep telling you, all right, uh, what do we just say? 15 times, let's say we're saying 9. Oh, hey, I made $135. Okay. How much did we give away? We gave away $45, right? So because we're giving away three t-shirts, actually how much money have we made then? We've only made 90 bucks. So when you told me to round up to 10, which is correct, 15 times 10 is 150. Man, that sounds good, but then all of a sudden you got to take away those $45 that you got. It's the same thing as on the 25th of each month, I look at my bank account, I see some nice money in there. But then that drill goes away very quickly because I start taking out my bills and there's not much left. All right? So that is where we're kind of doing that with that business model going on. Adulting is not. Adults, sucks, that's for sure. Adulting does. So how much do we need to sell? 10 shirts to make $100. Okay? That's all well and good. We can see that off the graph. But what if I want to sell two hundred dollars? I want to make two hundred dollars worth. I want to make five hundred dollars worth, or a thousand dollars. I can't look at my graph. Does my graph go past? What does it go past? One hundred and twenty. Okay. If I want to know two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars, I can't use my graph anymore. So this is where we go on our computers, our calculators, I mean, and we solve an equation. So let's redo that. So let's now bring in our 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th grade equation skills to help us confirm that we get the same answer, okay, but um, without using our equation skills to solve out for t. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we get uh, right there, this is helpful for you, we're going back to 5th and 6th grade here. This is what we call our two-step equation, all right? In January, Ms. Keen and I are going to just slam you with equations. We're reviewing that small ones right now. We want to get T by itself. I want to get rid of addition, subtraction first. So it's minus 45. And what's the inverse of a minus 45? We want to show correct that plus 45 to both sides. We want to keep it balanced. So you want to show that plus 45 to both sides. Okay, 145 on the left. What happens to the 45s on the right? Yep, they cancel out, and you're left with 15T. Now, from there, we've been doing this one out quite a bit recently. How do I get rid of that 15 now? It's right in between that 15 and that T, that variable, is multiplication. And the inverse multiplication, as Chloe said, then was. And this is where your calculators are your buddies. Okay, we're going to take that 145 and divide that by what? 15? Do we get a nice number? No. Now, just a minute ago, you said me on the graph was between 9 and 10. We get the same thing, right? So, what do we have to sell again? One more time, we have to sell 10 shirts in order to, that, in order to make that $100. So, if you do have uh, businesses that are going through their payrolls, they're getting that money in, cool, but then you got to start taking out that money. You always want to be in the black. You want to be some positives there. If you're in the red too long, you won't be in business too long. Okay. Now, let's do another one here. I'm not gonna, we're going to talk about this table in just a second, but I'm not going to kill you on it. Hopefully you got a little bit of room off to the side. I want to figure out now, I want to make some good money here. So give me a, some good money. How much money do you want to make here? How much? You said twenty. You want to make twenty dollars selling t-shirts? Yeah, I say let's make a little bit more here. Oh. Oh. I say if you want twenty, I got twenty right here. Put twenty right there. Okay. All right. Well, Miss Keenel up here, she's thinking large. She's got Christmas coming up, 
And she wants she wants to make five thousand dollars. Okay. So how many T-shirts here are we gonna need to sell in order to make Miss Kimo's Christmas list here? We're still using that same equation, right? Five T minus forty-five. So let's solve it out and tell, let's tell Miss Kimo here how many T-shirts we need to plan on. Nothing changes. We're still solving the exact same thing. Okay. We got what? Add a 45 to both sides. We always undo subtraction addi addition first. Inverse of subtraction is addition. Add that 45. You got calculators there now. You should be able to add 5,000 and 45 together. 5,000 and 45. But now dividing it, we always do the next part here undo multiplication with division. So when we go to our calculators, okay, let's go to your calculators, and this is going to tell us how many uh, t-shirts we're going to need to sell in order to make Miss Keenel's uh, goal here. She's got a sweatshop going on, <laughs> child labor. Okay, how many t-shirts do we have to do in order to meet Miss Keenel's goal? 337, right? 336, Ms. Keenel's not going to be happy. She's going to be short of $5,000. But 337, Merry Christmas. Okay? So that's what we need to do to do that planning out of things. Okay? Now, on that table, we're going to talk about a few of these things. All right? So let's fill out this table. The problem is I don't like filling out tables. They don't give you a lot of room. It just sucks. They don't give you a lot of room on there. So... What have we been saying T represents the last two days? T-shirts, okay? Number of T-shirts, okay? And we saw yesterday E of T. What did we say E of T was from yesterday? Money, earnings, right? And G of T, we're using a different variable because we have a different equation. But it's still representing your earnings. It's just that we're using a different equation, so we have to give it a different name. Okay. Now, what's that 15 we keep talking about? What's that 15 representing? How much each shirt sells for. Yeah, how much each shirt sells for, right? Uh, okay. What one shirt sells for. And if you've got a large handwriting, feel free to bleed it into the other side. All right? I'm just going to throw a little bit right here. So that 15 is what we're selling each shirt for. And that's what we kind of encountered yesterday. And then today we talked a little bit about this T minus 3. But what does T minus 3 mean? T is t-shirts. Minus 3 means what? What we're giving away for free. Yeah, if you got t-shirts you're selling, but because it's a minus 3, you're giving away free, three free ones. So T minus 3 means uh, giving away three shirts. Okay? If it said T minus 5, what would it be then? T minus 5 would be giving away 5. Uh, it's really getting crazier than that. What's the 15T? We saw that 15T yesterday. We saw the 15T today. What does that 15T mean together? Together it means... The amount of money you're making per t-shirt sold. Okay? Uh, one t-shirt gets you 15 bucks, right? Two t-shirts gets you 30. Three t-shirts gets you 45. So that 15 T means um, <clears throat> the amount of money made per shirt sold. Making money by 15 times t. Each t-shirt sold gets us 15 bucks. I keep seeing this minus 45 appear today. We didn't see it yesterday. Why are we seeing a 45 today? We are giving away the cost of three freebies, three free shirts. So if maybe if anybody owns a business, if your family owns a business, okay. If you're giving away free stuff like that to draw some more business in, it's not free. It's free for the customer, I guess, but it's not free for the employer. Again, it still counts that money somehow. Okay. So we're hoping 
again, more business will come in because, hey, at least I drew them in with free stuff. All right, let's take, excuse me, let's take a look here. Same thing we explored for a while on the other page. Because then I was looking at this, and I didn't really want to care about that. So we're not. All right. <coughs> and still not really caring about the zeros. I hate that we put those in there. And um, that takes me to the next day. Let's go ahead and just do the next day and be done with it. Okay. So let's go ahead to the next page, activity 2.4. We're going to wrap this up with Maryland. All right. So take a minute, read through layers one on Maryland here. We're going to do this one more time with Maryland. This is, again, very similar to what the arts and crafts shows does here in just a few days. Actually, this scenario now that we modified it is exactly like what happens with the arts and crafts art craft show. All right, so as we read through this one, what's Maryland doing here? We're still uh, selling, what, at $15 a pop, and we're still also giving away three freebies, right? But what else is now happening? we got a booth fee, right? So we now have to account for that booth fee. So as Ms. Kino said a few minutes ago, it's open stuff sometimes. Yeah, it does. It just keeps costing us money. All right, and that's what's happening here. So let's look at this. I see a new graph again. They call this new graph, capital F of T, okay? They gave us the old one up there, that 15 T minus three or minus 45, but now they give us a new one. And what happened with that new one compared to, say, our old one from a few minutes ago? Bless you, Rick. Did it go up? Oh, what's it, what, do that a little bit now. It slid down a little bit, right? Because why, Excuse me, why did that slide down, slide down from $45, negative 45, down to here, down to negative 80? Because that booth fee. So now, how much money, before this craft show even starts, how much money are you in the hole now? You're down the hole of 80 bucks. So now we have to recoup $80 just to break even. And then after that, the t-shirts, then that's that earnings for you. Okay? So let's do that. Like we did a few minutes ago, let's create the equation of this line. AX plus B, AX plus B is always what we want to do. Got to know the slope. Got to know the y-intercept. Trying to beat that into you. We're still selling at 15 bucks a pop, right? That ain't changing. So that slope is still going to be 15x. But we're not starting off at 45 this time. We're starting off all the way down there at where? Negative 80 on the y-axis. That's again what we call our y-intercept. So now we are in the whole $80. So now the equation we're going to work with today, or this next part I should say, is using 15t minus 80. Once we get done with this one here today, we can wrap up this lesson nicely. 15t minus 80 is the equation we will now use. So you've got your business going on. Selling your shirts at $15, cool, but you're giving away some freebies, cool, but you also got to pay for the building itself. All right, so minus $80. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the same stuff we've been talking about. The graphs, how do the graphs show that the selling price for t-shirt remains the same? The slope. The slope change. The slope is the same. That line is increasing the same amount, okay? So what did the new booth fee do here? It took our graph and moved our graph. I'm sorry? Yep, moved our graph down 35. We're not at 45, negative 45. We're down at negative 80. So moved our graph down that $35. Now let's basically figure out what are we going to do to get out of the hole. What do we got to do to make that $80 back? How many t-shirts am I going to have to sell? Okay. And then after that, Ms. Kino still wants that $5,000. Are we still going to have to sell the same amount of t-shirts? I say, Ms. Kino, I think. Inflation. Oh, that is true. It's going up. All right. So let's take a look at the next part, uh, page, please. Let's use that 15T. All right. So <clears throat> how many t-shirts will Marilyn need to sell before she will have any money to return to her mom? So we want some type of money, no matter it's a dollar or a hundred dollars. We want to figure out what's the bare amount of t-shirts we got to sell in order to get above zero. 
Okay, so let's do that. We want to get above zero, right? So we're going to say 15t minus 80. And then whatever we get for a number there, like we've been doing with some rounding, we'll play that game of do we round it down or round it up? And does that get me actually to zero dollars above that? All right, I'm tired of doing it, but we'll do it one more time. How are we going to get rid of that minus 80? The inverse of a minus 80 is 2. Yep, that's not changing. You guys know math. It's repetitive. Good or bad, it's repetitive. 80 on the left, 15t on the right. You've been paying any bit of attention here since fifth grade? Gabby? Okay, 15 times t, the inverse of multiplication is? Division. Still division. Let's go to that calculator of yours. And what is 80 divided by 15? 5.3. So the question is where we round that. Is 15, sorry, is 5 sure it's going to be enough? Or are we going to need to round it up to what? 6. So let's check that here. 15 times 6, I'm hearing. $90. But how much am I already in the hole? I'm in the hole that minus 80. Do I get above 0? I do. There you go, Mom. Here's 10 bucks. At least made your money back, right? Okay, so what did we just say? How many shirts was that? Uh, was that six? Six shirts right there. Okay, six shirts to get above zero dollars. Okay. Now we're we're thinking large here. We're not going to go with a hundred dollars. Ms. Keenan, how much money you want to make here? 75,000. Oh, it's not a thousand, but 100. So, Ms. Kino here wants to make 7,500 here. Okay? So, let's scratch that off. Let's do that 7,500 then. Write that equation. I can't see that on my graph, so we're going to solve out that equation like we've been doing and doing and doing and doing. I'm going to do it on the left hand side where I got a little bit more room there. And let's make sure I put on those two zeros because 75 is very different. 7,500. Let's take our equation skills and go one more time here. Let's solve this dude out. Look, and look, it's the same thing, right? Add 80, add 80. Keep that thing balanced. 7,500 plus 80 is 7,580. I forgot my variable t right there. Nothing changes. Got 15 times in the inverse of multiplication. It is still division. Big money, no whammy. 75.80 divided by $15 a t-shirt. How many t-shirts we save? 506 t-shirts. We need to sell 506 t-shirts to make that $7,500. Because we gave, we gave away 80 bucks right there. All right. <clears throat> Don't be on your own your business. That's a rough, rough idea of how that's going to go with you. Okay. All right. Let's see if there's anything else worthwhile on that for us. I still don't care. And Miss Kino says so. We're going to hold off and talk to talk for tomorrow. It is nice to talk to talk for tomorrow. We'll pause that right there. And let's get out the assignment here for you today. Give us a minute to get that out for you. And go
like we've done before. All right, we've got you, got you a lot on these ones. Let's count the ones that we haven't talked about. Then you guys have plenty of time today to work on the ones that we skip over. <coughs> so right here at this point, this is what we call our quiz review. We're essentially now done with that lesson, and we don't have anything new between now and Monday when we take our quiz exam. So this is basically what your quiz is going to look like. If you can answer out these questions, you should be relatively cool. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the few things that, again, I just want to keep highlighting is number three, the difference from A, B, C compared to letter D off that one. So let's take a look on there. Again, when I'm doing 3A, <coughs> excuse me, that's what we just do with the t-shirts. Trying to figure out how much money we get from five t-shirts sold or ten t-shirts sold. This is just purely calculator here. Uh, plugging that in, but using those parentheses correctly. And telling them to your calculator, hey, what do I get in return? So make sure you know that difference versus letter D that we just talked about in our t-shirts today. So if you type it into your calculator correctly, what should you get in return? Somebody get a negative 10? Should be getting negative 10 out there. If you're not getting negative 10, I would say math is easy, but after a few days, it should be easy for you. Easier. How is that different from letter D? As we can see on letter D, I want to know what that X is. In order to get negative 10, I had to use negative 1. In order to get 14, what do I have to use for X? So just like we finished up with Ms. Keenel, when I make $7,500, it's the same idea here. In order to get that 14, how many X's do I have? What's the X I have to have there? Okay. What's that? 7? Okay, so let's check that out with Chloe. You're solving out our equation. This is our equation again. We do a lot of what we call a two-step equation. That's why you keep running it into you. You've got to be great at it. Not good, but great. We add 7 to both sides because the inverse of a minus 7 is a plus 7. 14 plus 7 is 21 right there. And then as we've been doing and doing and doing, Right between the 3 and the x is multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is still division. And then we divide. On the t-shirts, we do not get nice numbers. But on this one, I believe you do. Chloe said 21 divided by 3 is 7. So x turns out to be 7. A, B, and C should be quick and easy calculator parts. Letter D is a little bit more involved, okay? But it's just using your equation skills. All right, give you a second off that. Number five. Let's take a look at number five here. On number five, do we have ourselves a linear table or not? Well, first off, it actually says yes, we do. It is a linear table, so I'll shut up all that. It is a linear table. What we want to write then is a linear function. We want to write ax plus b for number five. So we just did that a second ago on our notes. We had the graph. And we said 15 over 1 was our rise and run. On the graph, sorry, on the table now, that's what we're going to use that skill we've been looking at the last week or so of uh, determining that change here. Okay? Now, here's the nice thing about this problem, if there is a nice thing. They already did the heavy working for you and said it's linear. So all we need to do is just one of these changes on each side. You don't have to do everything. Because they already told you it's linear, we know the points will make a nice line. You just need to go do one change. How do you go from negative 2 to 10? Negative 2 to 10 is a change of 8. I heard 8. I heard 10. I heard... Okay. It's the second one minus the first one. 10 minus the negative 2. It is 12. Okay. So that is where you want to check yourself with those calculators. It's always the second minus the previous. And 10 minus a negative 2, actually it's a change of 12. The arithmetic errors, that's going to mess some of you up. Let's watch that. How do we go from 0 to 3? Add 3. Now once we got the 3, we got the 12. How do we write that up? 12 over 3 or 3 over 12? 12 that should be an automatic correct. So we just found the slope as 12 over 3. Always reduce it down if you can. What's 12 divided by 3 give you? 
So we just found the slope to be 4. If this was multiple choice, I'm looking for the answer choices that do not have a slope of 4 and scratching those out. So we've already got the slope. What does that slope represent, the A or the B again? A is the slope. Slope is in front of the X. That is my slope. So what we have going right now is 4X plus, I don't know, something else. What does that B? We keep calling that B. A is the slope. Keep saying B is the, the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis at. Now, you probably closed your notes out. And we've talked about this before, but I'm going to try to emphasize it again. When we were doing the most recent stuff today, we were down here at 0, negative 45. And then we were down here at, what, 0, negative 80. The y-intercept, what's in common here? Negative, and, but what else is in common? That zero. That y-intercept is always happening when that x is zero. Look at the table. x is zero. What is its y value? Yeah. So this is right here. When it says x is zero, it's saying, look at me. I am special. I am the y-intercept. Okay? So we now know that the y-intercept is going to be minus 2 right there. There is no work to do that besides knowing, hey, <clears throat> the y-intercept is when x is 0. That's what you get a log in your head. Now keep doing that with you. Keep doing that with you. So if it's a type-in question, you're going to type in 4, negative 2. If it's a multiple choice question, find me the one that looks like that. Okay? All right, give me a second. We'll flip it to the back side. Anything special happening on the back side? Number six. Let's take a look at number six here. We saw this one yesterday. We've already seen this in pieces. Let's bring it all back together again. Okay, quick and easy answers. X-intercept, Y-intercept, the slope, and what's the function? Those are the boom, boom, boom ones. So uh, where is the Y-intercept located? It's right here at the origin. The Y-intercept is at... 0. Where is the x-intercept located? And this is the one time, and we've seen it before, that the origin is both the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Now, what's the slope? Find me another nice point up there. Uh, here's a nice point. Here's a nice point. I got a crap ton of those. Make my steps. Make my steps. How much am I going up? How much am I going oh, to the right? Yep, as I go up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one. What is it? One over one or one over one? Yeah. Not that one, though. So one over one, right? <laughs> I'm just being stupid, bro. You know that. And that reduces down to just one. Now, if this is multiple choice, look for the one that has a slope of one and a y-intercept of zero. If you need to type it in, you better type it in correctly. In front of the x is the slope. And behind it is the y-intercept. So what are you going to type in in front of the x? We're going to type in the number 1. And what am I going to type in after this, the x? The plus 0 because that's the y-intercept. Okay. That's old stuff. That's the boom, boom, boom. Those are the easy points. The last three right behind that, those are the newer things. Okay. I expect good things, but at the same time I know that that will sometimes mess us up. So let's take a look here at and evaluate f of 1. When we say f of 1, what I mean is go to the x-axis, that one t-shirt sold. How much money did you make with one t-shirt sold? 1 comma, right here, right? What's that point right there? 1 comma 1, right? I am at 1, and I'm up here at the y value of 1. Now, weird to say I sold negative 3 t-shirts, but it's the same kind of idea. When I act as x is negative 3, where's my graph at? Down here at, what's the point there? Negative 3 comma negative 3, right? So it turned out to be the same. And we're going to do more of this with the last one there.
reverse it, as you can tell, the question doesn't even look the same. So this is where we're saying, hey, if you want to make $3, how many t-shirts do you need to sell? If you want to make $1,000, how many t-shirts do you need to sell? I want to look at the y-axis at 3. Where's the y-axis at 3? Right here. Where is it located? That point right there. We did that earlier, and that's at a nice point. 3, comma 3. X has to be 3. Give you some chance to try that on your own with the other one, and we'll talk about it there. Last part down there at the bottom. It's that time of the year. It's Thanksgiving. Along with Thanksgiving, usually comes some potatoes, right? Mashed potatoes. All right. So, total cost of potatoes is 79 cents a pound. Are you a mashed potato or a sweet potato person? Mashed potato. Mashed potato? Do you do gravy with it? Um, no gravy. What do you do, Victor? You do both? I'm more of a sweet potato type person. Sweet potato? Okay. There is an answer. Sweet potato. Okay. You were wrong. Uh, you were wrong, yeah. <laughs> now, Mrs. Dredge would probably disagree with me. She's more of a mashed potato person. She likes them both, actually. She likes hers with gravy on it. All right. Then we can go into brown gravy or white gravy. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's, there is a difference, and there's for sure... Mashed potatoes, the correct answer. What is it, Connor? Brown or white? Brown. Mashed potatoes, I believe it should be brown. Oh, cool. Up. We got Nazale's approval, so now we're really good. All right. I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving here, so let's move on. All right. We want to talk about then writing out the equation for this. Okay. So <clears throat> we're, we're uh, buying what? Potatoes at 79 cents per pound. We want to write an equation, a linear function with that. Let's keep in mind again what when I say right linear function, what should they always look like? AX plus B. One of the things I want to beat into you is that. How much does it cost per potato? A pound per potato, right? 79 cents. When you see pound per pound, anything like that per potato or anything like that, that's the slope. What was the cost per t-shirt? It was 15 per t-shirt. Here it is going to be 79 cents per pound and they're telling us to use P for pound and they're telling us to use T of P. P for pounds and T for the total cost. Yes ma'am. Now that's the only thing we're doing here. We're not buying anything else. It's last minute. We forgot the potatoes. We're running in. That's going to be the only thing on our bill. So we don't have to worry about any of the other fixings to go along with it. So there's not going to be a wider step to go with that, okay? That's just it. It's just 79 cents per pound. Now, when they say evaluate T of 5, we just did that up above, basically, right? You've been doing those for the last month. That's like a prediction. If you buy 5 pounds of potatoes, what's it going to cost for 5 pounds of potatoes? So... Type it into your calculator. Make sure you can correctly type that in. And as Chloe said there, you should be getting cost for potatoes should be $3.95. So, again, what does that mean? Um, it means bought five pounds. And how much did you pay? $3.95. Five pounds of potatoes cost you almost $4. Okay, how about the next one? What does that 2.5 mean? Now, on the t-shirts, we said two and a half t-shirts. Does that make sense? Can you have two and a half pounds of potatoes? Yeah, yeah, you can buy potatoes at half a pound. Okay, so you know those scales that they all have there to weigh your potatoes. You just don't put your hand on there to see how much your hand weighs. Okay, or press it down. All right. But that's the way your pounds of potatoes or whatever your fruit, whatever you're doing. But you can buy clearly half a pound, quarter of a pound, stuff like that. So now, how much is what? Uh, we just say two and a half. So how much is two and a half pounds of potatoes going to cost us? Yeah, so what would we round that up to? What would the store round that up to? Um, actually, not quite. 98 cents, correct. Where do you see that at? That's at the gas station. You see on the pumps where it says 0.999 at the end there? 
All right, that's the same thing happening like that. So what does that mean? Bought two and a half pounds and paid how much? Almost two dollars, right? Now, is that really what it costs? No, because what have we not calculated any of these values for? There's two things in life, death and life. taxes. Yes, death and life is true, but death and taxes. None of this has taxes, and then taxes get messy. We're not going to talk about taxes right now. It's not going to cost you $2. It's going to cost you three cents more. Two fifty. how much pounds of potatoes? So let's say you're going home, and it, you're getting that dinner ready, and you're like, oh, shoot. All right, I forgot those potatoes, but all I can scrounge up is two fifty worth. How many pounds of potatoes is two fifty going to get me for uh, Thanksgiving here? So, where is that two fifty going? Am I going to take it times 0.79? No, that's the money we keep finding out here. How much the cost is? So, what that two fifty is? It's the other side of that equation. Okay. So as we've been solving equations, Ms. Kino want to make $7,500, all right? We want to here have how many potatoes, how many t-shirts. So what are we going to do with that 79? In between that 0.79p is what operation? Yep, and the inverse multiplication is? Go to my calculus, go to my calculator, and what is 250? Divided by 0.79. What do we just say, 79? So about how many pounds of potatoes? 3. Point, now 3.2. Now let's think about that. This is a weird one. What's 3.2 times 79 cents? Is it more or less than 250? Right? My stupid calculator didn't do that. You just said 3.2, right? Is it more than 250? So I don't need to run it 3.2. Where do I actually want to do that to? I want to go to, Ari, would you say? I want to go to 3.1 on this one. It makes sense to round 6 here, 1 up to 2, right? Because we all learned that. But because this one has context, a 3.1 pound of potatoes is all that we can afford them. Okay, so how much do we need to purchase, or how much can we purchase? 3.1 pounds. Was it 3? No, was it 3.1? Okay, 3.1 pounds. Yep, it's basically, I've got this much money, and when you go put it on the scale, and you run it through the checkout, that number on the screen there, Matt, that you have there, if it doesn't, what do you got to do? Put back below your parent. Yep. So rounding on that 3.16 makes sense to go for 0.2 because here we can't go above that 250. It makes sense to actually just round it to 3. Okay. I, I just, I, I just think it makes sense kind of counter to everything you learned. I, don't know. I, just, I, I imagine someone just like, like taking like the tiniest thing and trying to put it back to the parent. It does happen. Yep, it does. All right. Let's finish off the ones that we didn't talk about. <clears throat> Tomorrow we'll come in, we'll continue working on things for next week. <clears throat> Some preparation for our course. Okay? Mm -hmm. I like that. Now that we need to